Now, we all know that I love roguelikes. I mean, who doesn't at this point? Depending on how you value your dollar, of course, roguelikes provide a massive amount of value for the consumer when compared with other games. Their intrinsic complexities, randomized elements, and generally cheaper price tag means that you'll generally get tired of playing them long before they run out of content. In essence, they're the supernatural of video games. God, why are there so many seasons of this shit? You're upset. We should discuss it. But while all decent roguelikes have complex elements, not all of them can execute these effectively. Today, you and I will be taking a look at Boss Crushers, a new roguelike that recently left Early Access, developed and published by Space Horse. This seems to be their first release game, and I received this key for free, so these two factors must be assumed to have played a role in this review, just in the interest of disclosure. And if you've been a consistent viewer of this channel, you know that my channel focuses on reviews of PC games both new and old with a strong indie focus. Together, I think that we can cultivate a positive community focused on advancing the platform, so if you enjoy my content, please click that subscribe button and toggle the bell so you never miss a video. So, I have a lot to say about this game. A lot of good things and a decent bit of bad things. I paid a therapist a hundred bucks an hour to learn that it's best to begin with what's good to put the bad into perspective, which sounds like some shit you read in a fortune cookie, but whatever. That's what we're going to do with this review, and if you don't like that, well, you make a mean chili, you fuck. Anyway, Boss Crushers markets itself on the back of its multiplayer, but there is also a viable single player option as well, otherwise I probably wouldn't have accepted the key to be honest. You begin by selecting a character with two unlocked at default and three others to be unlocked through persistent progression. Now at first, I considered this a negative simply because there are only two characters, but I quickly realized that this is somewhat essential to learning some expanded mechanics and strategies. For instance, the Witch character is rapid fire and DPS focused. Now every character has passive abilities and randomized perks. Her passive ability, for instance, gives you a percentage based chance to revive dead enemies as shadows, which will immediately begin attacking other enemies. This synergizes with her Q attack, which allows you to place a shadow of your own to deal its own damage. The other character unlocked at launch is the Sorcerer. Now he's a much slower caster, but he also stacks base damage as a function of his passive ability and has more of a crowd control focus. Now it's pretty clear that this system is built specifically for multiplayer synergy, but it works exceptionally well in the single player campaign. Furthermore, these are more simplified mechanics. Juxtapose that with the first unlockable character, the Crystal Keeper. The Crystal Keeper is a tank, and her passive trait requires a better understanding of the fundamentals of positioning than the other two, as periodically she will overcharge and drop a shield pickup. But based on the enemy placement, this may or may not be easy. What this means is that in order to effectively optimize this mechanic for multiplayer, or the hardest of the three difficulty settings, the player will have to be aware of enemy positioning to avoid flinks. The utilization of this armor will become a necessity as each level stacks in proportional difficulty as you complete one, and the Crystal Keeper doesn't have the best grasp on managing her mana. Your character also improves and changes over time through a surprisingly wide variety of options. The perks below the character portrait are randomized and can be re-rolled once at the beginning of each run and will tweak minor things about your strategy. For instance, if you choose to continue with the perk that stacks spell power, it may be to your benefit to maximize that spell power even further so that each hit you deliver cuts down the enemy faster than Game of Thrones 8th season. Why is that dude's name Drogon? It's a fucking dragon with a letter switched out. Just fuck. You know what, I'm gonna create a character for my reviews, right? I'm gonna name him Skeleton. Guess what the character's gonna be? This game also has an unlockable system. Over time, you'll gain experience, being granted access to upgrade your character with new talents, opening new items, and even changing out spells which can be bought in the various stores via spellbooks or acquired through perks. This game goes above and beyond the Call of Duty in allowing you to customize your playstyle, augmented and sometimes limited by the RNG of course because this is a roguelike, but it actually does add a decent volume of complexity to this game where other devs, especially ones who may have just made their first retail game, probably wouldn't have done as well. Now I have no confirmation that this is their first retail game, but googling their name doesn't bring anything else up, so I'm willing to assume it's such. Now this really impresses me, and trying out the different character combinations alone kept me hooked for longer than I expected. Now about those spells, you can find them and put them in place of the default spells, seemingly for each one, though I have yet to find one that replaces the ultimate. Each character spell list synergizes well on their own. But min-maxers and efficiency freaks like myself will discover synergies that better suit your playstyle by switching around your spells. I really like outfitting the witch with ice for instance, so that I can freeze things in place and rapid fire bombard them with left click attacks. There are three difficulty settings, and they seem to alter many variables within the game. I checked them all out pretty extensively, and maybe it was just my luck, but I seem to get a lot more items on the easier settings. There are also much fewer enemies on the lower difficulties, so if you're having issues with progression, try dropping the difficulty a bit and it'll probably help out. The levels themselves are... they're pretty cool. 
There are three at the start, and once you find and free a certain character, you can bring portal runes that will give you extra levels with higher difficulty but greater rewards. You can tell that this game borrows heavily from Diablo in many regards, but it does so effectively and not to its detriment. After six hours, I've still barely unlocked any of the unlockables, and I have no intention of stopping as I find this game quite fun and satisfying to play for the most part. But what about the bosses? They are... pretty goddamn fun. There are a handful of bosses, each presenting challenges unique to itself and preying on different player weaknesses. For instance, one boss will require you to get good and nail some simple but murderous bullet hell mechanics before you piss it off. Then it'll drop a bunch of tentacles in a black hole just to top off the hentai sundae and kill your run. Combining all these positives with the other positive leads to a great fundamental core. The visual design is nice and the music is really good. Now it retails for $15 on Steam which I wish that I could say was worth the price. However, that brings me to the negatives of this game. First off, there are quite a few spelling errors. This alone is not a big deal to me, but several comments on Steam mentioned it, so I decided that it may be worth mentioning in my review if that's the kind of thing that can be a make or break for you. The thing that slides my review from a pick this up to a don't are the performance issues, and I seem to have them worse than a lot of people in the comments. Now I give them credit, Space Horse have made a community post mentioning that some cards suffer major performance issues and that they are working on them. But as of this review, they're not yet fixed. It actually hurts me to say this, but right now this game isn't worth buying. Performance problems like this one are rampant, literally every boss fight for me, and throughout the duration of the entire boss fight, the hitching continues, making beating them on hard difficulty basically impossible and really tough on the medium difficulty. I tried tweaking video card settings and even dropping some of the end game settings, but the problem still persists. I also don't know how long the simple unlock of rewards will remain compelling once you've beaten the game once or twice. A game like this is going to need a bit more content to justify a $15 price tag, I think. I don't like to compare actively competing games like this, but I'm sure you can think of a few $15 games that runneth over with more content than the Game of Thrones fanbase has salt right now. Boss Crushers is a compelling experience marred by performance drops. And honestly, considering how complex it is to program a game, I can't condemn them wholly for the fact that they haven't yet been fixed, because development is a complex process, and an inexperienced team on PC has a lot of factors working against them. So rather than rubber stamping this game as a no-buy, I will say that those interested should wishlist this game and periodically check up on it to see the developer community posts on the subject. Once the game is fixed, I would feel justified in paying a $15 price tag for this game without worry, because I cannot stress enough that the core game is phenomenal. Unlike the name Drogon. Drogon? Fucking Drogon!